Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this series of Kaspersky Unified Monitoring and Analysis Platform. In this series we've discovered quite a few things and um, in this particular section we are going to start talking about the enrichment and the streaming of events using the DNS perspective. We also have the threat intelligence that's coming into the conversation and the enrichment in general for information security and the context surrounding information security. So, events can include IP addresses, host names, URLs, file hashes, and the SIEM system receives this data from various event sources. At the same time, there is a huge amount of information on IOCs or indicators of compromise that can and is integrated and aggregated into what we call threat data feeds. So let's take a look at Kuma's integration with the Cybertrace Threat Intelligence Platform from Kaspersky. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. I already have the Cybertrace platform in, in my instance installed. And in this case, two enrichment rules are already configured. Why are there two? Well, the reason is that on Kuma 3.2, there is new mechanism of integration and interaction with Cybertrace. And this is using the Cybertrace API. So unlike the previous mechanism, where events were enriched in multiple threads, but synchronously, the API allows you to transfer events not one at a time, but in huge bundles. The maximum bucket size is actually 65 megabytes. And this is the method that should be used in loaded systems. The previous rule was left over from the previous version and is no longer used. So to understand how the settings differ, let's take a look at both of these rules. So previously, the Cybertrace type and port was 9999 and that is what we used. It was necessary to map the Kuma event fields to the Cybertrace indicators. It was necessary to specify the number of streams, the number of requests per second, etc. Now, of course, because the Cybertrace platform is utilizing HTTP port 443 for the enrichment type, it is enough to simply list the fields to be sent to Cybertrace. And this is done through authentication. And of course, this authentication mechanism is required. So generally, I just need to specify my username and password um, and obviously the secret. All right, in Kuma 3.2, both enrichment mechanisms are available for backward compatibility, but I will use the new method. So I go ahead and I go and connect the enrichment rule to the collector and update the service configuration. In both methods, the values of the fields we specify are passed to the Cybertrace platform. And if a match is found, information about this is obviously recorded in the threat intelligence field or TI field of the Kuma event. In events, I will make a search query with the condition that TI is not empty. In the event, you can see that the IOC data is actually present. So, Information about the identified indicators of compromise can also be used for correlation. For this, there are conditions of checking the TI field. For example, there is a rule on the correlator that generates an alert if the hash of the file mentioned in that particular event is already known as an indicator of compromise. So, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our 16th and final uh, addition to this particular series on Cybertrace and on overall the Kaspersky Unified Monitoring and Analysis Platform. Until the next time, thanks so very much for watching and goodbye.